sale or at an antique store. I'd rather buy the old ones that are well made in America. We'll see if it works on this crazy box though because these modern boxes, I don't know. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out how to get into them. I think I'm just going to go for it. Rip it apart. It's all this glue they put in here. Right, it's open. It's well wrapped in paper. Nothing in this piece, I guess. I'm gonna double check just to be sure. They must have used many yards of paper here. How many trees were sacrificed? Oh, don't worry, I'll throw it in the recycle bin. Well, the end flak fell off the box. It's an old AHM GG1 electric locomotive, which was originally priced on the box at $39.98. Made in Italy by River Rossi. And it celebrated the a hundred year celebration of American railroads from 1869 to 1969. And there were a number of different locomotives of different types on the real railroads back in those days that had a scheme similar to this. And I think they toured around the country, but it's a nice little locomotive. It has the pantographs. It says AR, American Railroads. There's a depiction of the gold spike on it. The number on the locomotive is 4902. It has this de decorative stuff up here. This one's not in perfect shape. It's obviously been played with or run. You can see rub marks here, different places. But I'm just happy to have it for my HO layout. I believe it's well, it's not 12-wheel drive. Only the this unit of six is powered. This unit just trails behind. This one still has the horn hook NMRA type old-fashioned couplers on it. I may probably leave it that way rather than try to put Katie's on. This came with it, which talks about the the GG1, kind of a service manual, I guess. And there's a list of dealers. Now, if you look at these dealer lists from these old boxes, you might find a dealer that's no longer a dealer in your town, but maybe in their back room somewhere, or up on a shelf somewhere, they might have some old trains. Never hurts to ask. And this is the parts list with the correct numbers. And this is important to keep because it might help you find a part if you need it for one of these locomotives. Now, this celebration scheme also came in certain steam engines. And I think they had passenger cars to match. And they went on tours or some such thing as that. And, you know, first we had the, this celebration. And it kind of prepared people, I think, for the 1776 railroad celebrations and color schemes. I remember the Seaboard sent one of their locomotives to Tallahassee, Florida in the red, white, and blue color scheme. And I have a Lionel copy of that locomotive. And I think 
something like the American Freedom Train or something such as that came through town too. I have a memory of something like that, but I don't remember the details anymore. Of course, I also remember the circus train coming to town, and that doesn't happen anymore. But there you have it, folks. Here we are at the HO layout. It runs. I've already pulled the top. Let me show you if you look at it right here and right here are the nubs that hold the top on you can see they're pretty far apart so when you go to pull the top you're gonna have to put your fingers pretty far apart after I pulled the top I noticed it had this wire right here which goes to the pantograph locations and I think this touches on that wire. So it could be that these pantographs are already powered. If I had a pantograph set up, I could find out and I could test it in some other way, but it's just a curiosity. Now, there's a plate that you pull that holds the motor on. And I can see it right here. That little shiny silver thing there, that's the clip. You can look at it from this side, there's no clip. I guess. Well, this, I've never done this before, so we're going to find out. I think that's how you pull the motor. So now, well, unfortunately, I got interrupted by a phone call. Now, I think if I pull this, at least that's what the instructions said to do, that I can slip the motor off to get at the, the worm gear. There it is. That's what holds the motor on. And it hangs there like that with the, the bent part down. So, in setting it here now, they say you can back the motor out on the instructions, but maybe you have to drive the worm out, I don't know. We'll find out. This is the point where you wonder if you'll ever get this thing back together again, by the way. There it is this right out of there. Something's holding it tight though. I see a lot of grease down in there, so I don't think I need to grease this. And that's what I wanted to do anyway, was to inspect that to see if I needed to grease it, but it appears that I don't. I'm not gonna push my luck and take it any further than this. I'll leave that for somebody else with, who might be able to do a better video than mine. Well, that slipped right back on. Whoops, it didn't grip it, so we'll have to do it again. It looks so easy in the instructions, doesn't it? Pull this off, comes right out. Put this back, goes right back. Well, not necessarily. Well, now it's back. It said to lubricate the axles, so I will. At any rate, you see how this thing comes apart for servicing, but unfortunately you didn't see me actually lubricate the worm gear, mainly because I decided not to push my luck. It didn't seem it needed it. It had plenty of grease. I don't think this has been run much. Now we'll see if I've messed it up or if it runs. A lot of wheels to put on the track here. I wish this was 12 wheel drive, but it's not. All right, it's on the track. Will it run? Yay. I actually think it's going wider now. It could be my imagination. I could be fooling myself. So this should just pop right back on. Fingers far apart, it's on. Now there you hear the noise. It's a lot noisier in that direction than it was in the other direction. 
You can see how it does in slow speed. Right now the wheels are slipping, which means I probably spilled oil on them. I'm gonna put the pulse pallet on now. So I have pulse power on. That's the old fashioned way of getting very slow speed operation out of these things. It's about as slow as it wants to go as a practical move. And so, there you have it, folks. Now the instructions make it look easy. There you see him spread the shell, but his fingers are so close together, like I said, you've got to have your fingers far apart. There's the clip we pulled. He lifts the motor out so simply to expose the worm drive. There's also apparently a clip that holds the headlight bulbs in place that you have to pull if you need to replace the headlight. That's it.